We're done with Main Street for the day. So I have about 30 minutes before team time starts. I think I need to shave this again. My mustache is starting to, to fade. I need to see if I can use John's trimmers. Hey John! John! So, right? The halfway point. I did never ever thought this moment would come. Well, no, eventually the end of the race will come and eventually I will move on and become an old man one day, hopefully. But you know, still, halfway point. It's kind of a big deal. And when I look back over the last five and a half months, I can see there's definitely a change that's happened in me so far. So I remember at launch, they gathered all of them squad in a room and they said, all right, ask God, what's one more thing you need to give up? I was getting the impression for like expectations. I need to give up my expectations for what I wanted my race to be. I had to give those up, moving on. I thought I already did that, but you know, God wants to make sure you get it all done. And that's definitely one of the biggest things I've learned over the last five and a half months is that expectations can really be a I didn't think my race would turn out the way it has. Not at all. When I signed up for the world race, I was signing up to do signs and wonders. Very hands-on, spiritual high, lots of Holy Ghost dropping bombs on us. That's what I thought God was calling me to, right? To actually live a life like they did in Acts. But, you know, you know God, right? At least the God I know lives out in left field. I have no doubt that God called me on this journey, that he wanted to teach me something, and if I believe my own testimony, I believe that God has something greater for me planned than I have planned for myself. So I'm gonna trust him with that. I think I'm gonna keep this old patch, just to be different from the rest of the guys. And you can see my journey distinctively changing from what I expected, starting in month one. Month one, Cambodia, culture shock to the max. And I know I really didn't show this in my videos because I was still learning how this whole thing works, how this dynamic works, and what I really wanted to get out of it, and what I wanted to show you, and what I wanted you to get out of it. But month one really was about me giving everything back up to God. So when I got in the race, God had like stopped talking. And I remember sitting there, praying, going like, all right, God, I want more. I'm here on this thing, and I want more of you, and just give me some like revelation and some epiphanies, and give me, just drop the knowledge on me. And I remember him saying like, can't you just rest in my goodness? And that was a big pill to swallow. And that started this whole journey that has been more dealing with contemplation than it ever has been about like physical experiences. It's been much more an internal thing. And I believe the external will eventually mirror the internal, so maybe this is going somewhere. And then you get month two, Thailand. Thailand was basically me being angry. There's a lot of dark spots in my life where I went really dark, really deep, and I didn't know if I would ever come back out of it. And Thailand put me in that exact same spot again. Actually, I just don't want anyone to talk to me right now because, ah! And I really was questioning God, the father role of God, whether God can even be trusted. And in those dark spots, I found that God was 100% there. Just like he's 100% there, when the feelies hit. He was there completely on both of those spectrums. And there started my journey into darkness. I know that sounds weird, journey into darkness, but I'm really finding the simplicity and the dark side of God. Not necessarily the light, but like the adiphatic sense of God, where I cannot label God or put him in any boxes, and to label God or to say anything would be to diminish his character and put him in a box completely. It's that God is in the, uh, the cloud of mystery and the unknown. That's what I've been kind of delving into. Yes, I'm using this as a mirror because we don't have one. So thank you for indulging with me. 
Okay, month three, Malaysia. It surely happened. Uh, Malaysia, I really learned about God as a verb. That is awesome. So, I believe that God is definitely like a noun, right? God lives in us. There was definitely God the being. But there was also something I was missing that was like God as a verb itself. Like God is the interaction and the interchange between two people. And I wanted to focus on community that month. I was cool in my relationship, but how in a community does this really work? And River Dancers, my team and I, it was our unsung hero month. And so I really had to trust in the team that they knew what was going on. Here, does that look good? Nope. And that was kind of hard for me, not gonna lie, but I really wanted to see God move in that. And he did, completely. And you can go back to those videos. You can watch. God did extraordinary things in the Young Sung Hero Month for me. Here. Actually, go back. Also in that, I learned about support. In a community, you need to support one another. If somebody has an idea, you gotta run with it and say, you know what? I trust you, and I trust that you can hear God, so we're gonna go for it. Okay. What do we have to lose? I'm gonna support you 110%. Well, mm. That was a big lesson that I needed to learn way early on in my race. Yeah. Then you got month four, the Philippines. Sometimes you guys gotta jump out of your comfort zone like this. Woo! Splash. That's all kind of embarrassing for me. The Philippines overall was a fantastic month. We did a lot, I learned a lot, and it really was my crisis of faith where I had to deconstruct everything I knew and let God build me back up. And only in those truly rough crucibles do I think that the best of us will be shown. And that's where I saw myself give more grace and more mercy and more forgiveness and really work through things in my past and in my present that can bear good fruit in my life. At least I think so. And we are finally figuring out what it actually meant to be on the world race and what does community look like? What does feedback look like? What does ministry look like? What does filling myself up look like? What does taking that time with God really look like? And that's where I really got into meditation, like hardcore. I was in it a little bit those first couple months, but hitting month four, I hit my stride and I've really come to a place of really enjoying meditation. Then we hit Africa. Africa. <laughs> Zimbabwe was huge. I learned a lot about work, what it means to work, and if you have a dream, to actually go for it. Because those people didn't have much at all, yet they would work harder than anybody else I would ever know. Whether it's digging dirt, or picking weeds, or doing anything, they were about work. It was ingrained in their culture. I also learned a lot about blind faith and perspective. We show up and we expect God to move because we showed up. Who are we? God is in this whole thing. If I actually believe what I preach and that God is here before me, here when I'm here, and there after I leave, there's a huge picture and I'm just in this little, little point and God is working through all of it and I am just blessed to be a part of the journey in somebody else's life. That was really big for me. Here we are, month six. Manistry month. <laughs> We're just men. Curly <laughs> walked in a room with no handle. So I think I'm I think I'm even. Odds are probably not. Alright, well, I think that's a wrap on that. Team time should be starting soon. If you've enjoyed the journey so far, please give me a thumbs up. In fact, if you could just comment on your favorite video I've done so far, just comment um, purple people eaters. Comment purple people eaters under your favorite video from this first half. Just so I know what you guys like and what you dig on. If you wanna jump on board this train right now, hit the subscribe button. I'd love to join you in on this journey. This is you right here. I appreciate y'all. You're great. Sorry, I looked over there as a giant bug. Whew. Big bugs. So, um, that's me in a nutshell. Halfway point. The world race. Hashtag 11-11. Caleb Pauls. I'm out. I'll see you later.